Are you ready for Starship Flight 7? Scheduled for January 10th, 2025, this upcoming mission will showcase the next generation of SpaceX's Starship, featuring a range of exciting upgrades. One of the most noteworthy enhancements is the use of the new metallic heat shield, a topic that has generated considerable discussion during previous tests. After extensive testing, the metal tiles have undergone further upgrades, significantly differentiating the heat shield for Flight 7 from those used in earlier missions. So, what makes Flight 7's heat shield stand out? Find out everything in today's episode. Anyway, thank you for helping us reach 90,000 subscribers. Our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. We are on the brink of Flight 7, marking a significant advancement in SpaceX's Starship program. As noted, a new ship, a new year, and new limits. Excitement still guaranteed. This upcoming test flight is set to introduce the Starship Block 2, which promises enhancements in size, technology, and power. The upcoming test flight will include the inaugural test for payload deployment and conduct multiple re-entry tests aimed at optimizing the ship's catch and reuse capabilities. The mission will also involve launching and returning the Super Heavy booster. Clearly, SpaceX aims at Starship's full reusability this year, which is crucial for future missions like Artemis 3 scheduled for 2027. In Artemis 3, the Starship Lunar Lander will fly to the moon, so it will need to be refueled in orbit by multiple Starship tankers. SpaceX plans to demonstrate in-space refueling of Starship this year to prepare for that. This process involves two Starships docking in orbit for propellant transfer. Therefore, enhancing the thermal protection system is vital for safeguarding the vehicle during re-entry. While the Starship human landing system is designed to be expendable, the support tankers must be reusable to ensure efficiency and sustainability in future missions. Rework of the heat shield has become one of the main subjects of Starship testings since Flight 5, with replacing the entire thermal protection system with newer generation tiles, a backup ablative layer, and additional protections between the flap structures. Having tested this new design in two previous tests, SpaceX is now confident it will be modified and implemented in Flight 7. According to SpaceX's latest updates for Flight 7, the ship's heat shield will also use the latest generation tiles and includes a backup layer to protect from missing or damaged tiles. The latest version of tile here is metallic tiles, marking a revolutionary shift from the traditional ceramic to metallic material. Metallic shields offer significant advantages over traditional ceramic tiles, particularly in their ability to withstand multiple re-entry cycles with minimal degradation. This characteristic aligns seamlessly with SpaceX's ambitious goal of developing a fully reusable spacecraft. Unlike ceramic tiles, which can suffer from wear and damage over time, metallic heat shields are designed to endure the extreme conditions of atmospheric re-entry without the same level of maintenance required. The use of high-temperature metal alloys for heat shields provides excellent mechanical and thermal properties, allowing them to resist the intense stresses and temperatures experienced during re-entry. These materials not only maintain structural integrity under extreme conditions, but also require less frequent refurbishment compared to their ceramic counterparts. However, metallic tiles have a big disadvantage as we have seen in Flight 5. Ahead of the flight, the engineers installed six aluminum-coated heat shield tiles on the S-30's side, and all of them melted during re-entry. Then it came to Flight 6. There was a big upgrade on the heat shield material. As SpaceX revealed, ahead of the flight, it tested those materials in a simulated Martian atmosphere. The material began to crack and melt as the test progressed offering valuable data on its performance under extreme stress. After the test, Elon Musk added that the team returned to the idea of adding ullage gas or liquid film cooling to the metal shield. Adding further intrigue, 
The concept of metallic tile with active cooling is also one of multiple metallic tile options available for Flight 7 to test alternative materials for protecting Starship during re-entry. The incorporation of active cooling systems, such as eulage gas or liquid film cooling, can significantly improve thermal management. These systems help maintain lower temperatures on the surface of the tiles, enhancing their durability and effectiveness during intense re-entry conditions. Ullage gas can help maintain pressure and prevent cavitation in fuel tanks, while liquid film cooling can create a protective layer that absorbs heat and reduces the temperature experienced by the shield. At this point, we are in favor of liquid firm cooling that involves introducing a coolant fluid to form a thin layer over a surface, effectively shielding it from intense heat during re-entry. The operation of liquid film cooling is straightforward. The coolant fluid, particularly propellant fluid, is released through small openings or slots on the surface, referred to as film cooling holes. Then the protective layer is formed. As the fluid flows along the walls, it quickly evaporates to gas, creating a protective layer between the surface and the hot gas stream. This layer not only absorbs heat but also minimizes the thermal load on the underlying material. Of course, the gas heats up and is carried away by the airstream and needs to be continually replaced. In addition to ceramic tiles, there are also more experiments with missing tiles. On Starship's upper stage, a significant number of tiles will be removed to stress test vulnerable areas across the vehicle. Of course, a backup layer will be added to areas with missing tiles as I mentioned. On the sides of the vehicle, non-structural versions of ship catch fittings are installed to test the fitting's thermal performance along with a smoothed and tapered edge of the tile line to address hot spots observed during re-entry on Starship's sixth flight test. The concept of missing tiles on the ship is not something new as it was applied in Flight 6 when S-31's heat shields were not fully installed. The heat shield configuration is a major shift, and SpaceX will use it to assess new secondary thermal protection materials. According to SpaceX, Several thermal protection experiments and operational changes will test the limits of Starship's capabilities and generate flight data to inform plans for ship catch and reuse. Notably, entire sections of heat shield tiles have been intentionally left off on both sides of the ship in key areas under study for catch-enabling hardware on future vehicles. In Flight 6, the areas without tiles are positioned around the forward flap, with images indicating that the heat shield is missing near the connection between the body and the flap. This modification could facilitate the installation of new catch hardware, potentially serving as a primary or secondary support point for the catching process. Envision a foldable system that can flexibly open and close, which would enhance integration with the chopsticks, leading to a more efficient and secure catching maneuver. In Flight 7, Tiles are also removed from similar areas. Along with releasing the long-awaited update for the seventh flight, SpaceX also welcomed 2025 by launching its first Falcon 9 rocket of the year. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket took off on Friday, January 3rd at 8.27 p.m. EST from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida launching the Thorea-4 spacecraft to geosynchronous orbit. Built by Airbus, Space 42's Thorea-4 next-generation satellite will extend service coverage across Europe, Africa, Central Asia, and the Middle East. Somya Srivastava, a SpaceX structures engineer, said during the launch webcast. Eight minutes and 40 seconds after taking off, the Falcon 9 booster returned to Earth for a landing aboard SpaceX's drone ship a shortfall of gravitas, offshore nearby in the Atlantic Ocean. Friday's mission marked the 20th flight and recovery for this Falcon 9 first stage booster and SpaceX's 341st recovery of an orbital class rocket. The Thorea 4 mission also marks SpaceX's 418th flight of a Falcon 9 rocket and the company's 435th mission overall. In 2024, SpaceX achieved a remarkable milestone 
by launching 138 orbital missions, with 134 of these utilizing its Falcon family of rockets. This represents nearly a 40% increase in launch cadence compared to 2023, when the company completed 96 Falcon missions. Notably, these 134 missions accounted for over half of all global launches, meaning that the total number of launches from all providers worldwide was still less than what SpaceX accomplished alone. Despite facing three mishaps during the third quarter of 2024, SpaceX maintained this unprecedented launch frequency. In July, the company experienced its first launch failure in 335 flights, followed by a booster landing failure in August that ended a streak of 267 consecutive successful landings. A third incident occurred after the Crew-9 mission, when the Falcon 9 second stage malfunctioned during disposal. Achieving such milestones is no small feat. It took approximately 10 years for the Falcon 9 rocket to reach its 100th launch, with the 200th launch occurring just three years later. By the end of 2024, the Falcon 9 had successfully completed its 300th and 400th launches, totaling 417 missions. This rapid progression highlights SpaceX's significant advancements in launch capabilities and operational efficiency over a relatively short period. The Falcon 9 rocket, developed by SpaceX, has a rich history that reflects the company's innovative spirit and commitment to advancing space technology. Its journey began with the first test flight of its predecessor, Falcon 1, on March 24, 2006. After several failures, Falcon 1 successfully reached orbit on September 28, 2006-2008. This success paved the way for the development of Falcon 9, which had its inaugural flight on June 4, 2010. Falcon 9 was designed as a two-stage rocket capable of carrying payloads to various orbits. The rocket quickly gained prominence for its reliability and cost-effectiveness. By October 2012, it completed its first resupply mission to the International Space Station, marking a significant milestone in commercial spaceflight. A key feature of Falcon 9 is its reusability. In 2014, SpaceX began testing a reusable first stage, culminating in the first successful landing of a Falcon 9 first stage at Cape Canaveral on December 21, 2015. This achievement revolutionized space travel by drastically reducing launch costs. The first recovery at sea occurred on April 8, 2016, when a Falcon 9 landed on a drone ship after delivering a payload to orbit the rocket continued to evolve with several iterations. Falcon 9 version 1.0 launched five times from 2010 to 2013. Version 1.1 flew 15 times from 2013 to 2016. And the full thrust version launched 36 times between December 2015 and June 2016, 2018. The latest variant, Block 5 was introduced in May 2018 and has since become the workhorse of SpaceX's launch fleet. Despite these impressive feats, SpaceX intends to replace both Falcon and Dragon with Starship in less than a decade. The recent launches of SpaceX's Starship rocket showed that the company is making serious progress in getting the vehicle ready for prime time. SpaceX COO Gwynne Shotwell believes that Falcon and Dragon's days are numbered as soon as 2030.